a whole bunch of facts that I'm going to just blow your mind with. It's going to be so entertaining. You're not going to know what to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to head over to this bridge. We'll see a couple of animals. Uh, it's really laid back. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. So I've got the microphone, so I'm the loudest one. So I don't care if you're talking. Uh, if you've got questions, raise your hand or just walk up to the front and ask me. Uh, we love questions. Oh, one in the back already? Or are you just saying hey? <laughs> These are my friends in the back. I like them. <laughs> hey. All right. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, we're all glad to have y'all here. Uh, do I have a lot of people in town visiting this uh, today? Or is yeah. that everybody? Okay. Well, if you're from Austin and you've never seen the bats before, we're glad you finally decided to come see them. And yeah, is this everyone's first time to see the bats? Or is it yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, yeah, y'all are in for a treat. Uh, it's kind of early in the bat season. Um, the bats that live under this bridge are uh, Mexican free tail bats. They migrate here from Monterey, Mexico every March, and they'll stay until November. Uh, because of the number of bats that come to this bridge, uh, we actually have the world's largest urban bat colony in the world. Uh, so it's not the largest one um, ever, but it's the largest one in the middle of the city. So we're really lucky to have that. Um, and yeah, they all live in the bridge that's right here behind us. Uh, last night, the people who count the bats, I have no idea how they count the bats, that is not my job at all, said that we had about just under 300,000 of them come out. Uh, so again, it is early in the season, peak season in July and August, we'll have about 1.5 to 2 million bats living under the bridge, but I promise 300,000 bats flying out is still really exciting to see too. Yeah, uh, so we're going to head this way, uh, we can talk about, a little bit about the lake and stuff like that too as we go over. Um, so yeah, this body of water, you'll hear it called the lake primarily, it's Lady Bird Lake. Uh, if you know any uh, locals that have been here for a long time, they'll still call it Town Lake. That's what it was called when it was built. Uh, but it's actually a river too, uh, that's why it's not very wide. Uh, this body of water is the Colorado River. Uh, it's not the same one that goes through the Grand Canyon, it's actually a second Colorado River that's entirely within the state of Texas. Uh, it starts out in the Northwest Plains and then goes southeast across the state and digging into the Gulf of Mexico. Check, check. This river has a uh, long history of flooding. Um, back in 1901 and in 1930, the water uh, rose so high that it actually covered the bridge where the bats live now. Uh, luckily, that was before the bats lived here, so we didn't have a problem. Uh, but it still was a problem for doing just like millions and millions of dollars in damage. Uh, so they wanted to figure out how to get this water under control. So they built a series. I don't know why the microphone is going out, but uh, if it starts acting up too much, we'll get another one. Can everyone still hear okay? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, so they wanted to figure out how to get the floods under control, so they built a series of locks and dams, creating the Highland Lake chain. Uh, that's why this is technically a lake now, just because it has a dam on each side. Uh, it was finished in 1960, they called it Town Lake, and then in 2003, they renamed it after Lady Bird Johnson. As we're getting closer to the bridge right here, you can see some people uh, up there lined up. A bunch of people are in the park over there too to see. Uh, but that bridge brings us a whole lot of tourism throughout the year. It is. Uh, this is the name of this bridge. Uh, the full name is the Ann W. Richards Congress Avenue Bat Bridge. Uh, it was named after my favorite Texas governor. And if you like King of the Hill, uh, there's an episode where they come to Austin and Bill actually starts dating Governor Ann Richards. So definitely one of my favorite episodes. You can see the bridge in that one as well. Uh, but yeah, so bats have been coming to this bridge uh, for decades, but it wasn't until 1980 that they started coming in the millions. What happened in 1980 is they decided to widen the bridge. Uh, they had no intention of turning it into a bat habitat. It was just a complete accident. Uh, but what they did in 1980 is they expanded the bridge and they, uh, they put in these little heat expansion joints on the underside. Uh, these are just small cracks that run the length of the bridge. So not where you see those big arches, but literally just on the bottom of the bridge right there are those small cracks. Uh, they're about two inches wide, 15 inches deep, and in each square foot you can fit about 50 adult bats. Uh, what's fine is only about 10% of those bats are actually holding on to the bridge itself and the concrete. Uh, yeah, the rest of them are just holding on to each other. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so uh, once one starts flying, if you know all your buddies are holding on to you, if you're ready to go and you drop off, that means all the other ones are coming with you. Uh, so it's really hard for scientists to just pick off one bat. Uh, they like body heat, they like high temperatures, uh, so that's why they choose to come to Austin. All right, as we get closer to the bridge, when we go under, I'm going to uh, be quiet for just a minute so you guys can listen for the chirps. Uh, bats, they emit low frequency little chirping sounds, kind of like um, crickets or mice, uh, those kind of things. You'll hear some little squeaks as we go under. And uh, if you have really good hearing, you can start to hear some. Uh, I can hear some now. Again, as we go under, just look up for those little cracks, those heat expansion joints. That is where the bats are living.
And again, these are Mexican free tail bats. Uh, you'll also hear uh, the name Brazilian free tail bats. They're the same species, just some of them are from Mexico and some of them are from Brazil. Uh, what's fun about this colony too is that they're actually a maternity colony. So when they come back uh, in March, about 95% of these bats are pregnant females. As we go under, you should be able to hear them. So again, just kind of listen up. Uh, you can see these cracks um, that run the length of the bridge. That's where they're living. <laughs> yep, not quite time to put your hoodies on just yet. Once they start flying, though, it might not be a bad idea. <laughs> Yep. Depending on which way the wind is blowing, you can always catch a big whiff of guano sometimes too. I fancy you learned for it. Yep. They like to live under this bridge instead of the other ones just because of those heat expansion joints. Um, bats, as you know, are nocturnal, so they don't like the sunlight. Uh, so those little cracks, when they slip up in there, uh, it keeps all the sun out. It keeps it nice and dark for them. Uh, they're also small enough where the bats can slip in easy, uh, but all the predators, uh, like different types of birds of prey, uh, they're not able to get in there and pick them off. So it just makes a perfect home for those bats. We got some cool guys on a boat over here. Hey, guys. I like y'all style, but uh, <laughs> Texas floats all over. Nice. <laughs> Which, which side do they come out on? Uh, so they're all going to come out on this side that we're on now. And that's a great question. Uh, so bats, keep in mind, they're the only flying mammals uh, on the entire planet. Uh, so they're not like birds. Uh, they're a lot closer to humans. Uh, they have live births. They feed their baby milk, um, et cetera, et cetera. But they're also very smart. Uh, when the bats start flying, they're only going to fly in this direction towards us to the east. And that has to do with just the fact that they're nocturnal and they don't like the sun. Uh, you've probably heard the expression blind as a bat before. Uh, that expression is not entirely true. They're not blind, uh, they're just really light sensitive and they prefer the darkness. Um, I prefer the darkness too, I don't know. That's why I like the bats so much. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so they uh, fly away from the sun always. So when they come out, they're only going to come to the east. That way the sun is setting to their backs behind them. Uh, they usually will stay out the entire night. They'll come back in the morning, uh, usually by about 4 a.m. And when they do that, they're flying back towards the west with the sun rising to their east. In to their backs again. Uh, so yeah, they're always flying away from the sun, never in that direction. Uh, when they do start flying out, I'll give you guys a couple of tips for where to watch. Um, the first thing we're going to see is about two or three scout bats come out. Uh, sometimes they can be hard to see because keep in mind these bats are very small. Uh, the adults, they're, uh, they only grow to have about a six inch wingspan. Uh, so they're very tiny. Uh, I got the privilege of seeing one up close last year and I was surprised just to see how small their body was. That's uh, about the size of your thumb. Uh, so these bats are just very, very small. Uh, the maximum weight is usually about 15 grams. Uh, so to put that into perspective, that's about 15 paper clips, three nickels, uh, very, very lightweight creatures. Yeah, uh, so they're, again, they're very small. When they start flying out there, we'll see one or two scout bats that come out first. They like to do a couple trips uh, around the lake, around the bridge, make sure that uh, there's no major predators, no major rainstorms. Uh, again, the bats, they don't like to fly when it rains uh, because it makes them too heavy to fly. Uh, but yeah, those uh, bats will um, go around, check things out, and then report back to the colony and let them know that it's safe and a uh, good time to start flying out. Once that happens, you'll start to see a lot of bats in the top of the arches just kind of fluttering around. Uh, I don't see any quite yet, but hopefully it should start happening soon. Uh, keep in mind, there are wild animals, so as much as we wish we could, uh, we can't control them <laughs> or put an exact time on them. But uh, the last couple nights, it's been between about 7.15 and 7.20. Uh, again, once they start flying, we'll see a few of them start to flutter around um, in the arches, and then uh, they'll start to pour out of the bridge, um, kind of in like a smokestack. Uh, usually, uh, they like to go right above this tree line over here to start out, but if they're really hungry and in a hurry to, uh, to get out, then we can sometimes get two or three different streams of them going at the same time. Uh, you'll notice, too, as uh, it starts to pick up and uh, more and more bats start to pour out, uh, the bats will come from all over the different sides of the bridge, but they like to make their way to the south shore. So they'll make their way left across the bridge, going out and around each column, back underneath the bridge, and then usually coming out at that last street light right above the tree lights. Uh, you can see we've got a lot of people starting to line up on the bridge over here too. Uh, so it's a pretty popular attraction.
Uh, for those of, those of you that can see, we've got like a tree over here that's kind of got some white splotches on the bottom. Uh, usually this is a roost for a bunch of egrets. Um, egrets are these big white fishing birds that live out on the lake. Uh, hopefully within the next 30 minutes or so, we'll start to see more of them um, starting to congregate over here. Uh, some of them eat the bats, but not really. Most of them uh, are into eating fish, but pretty much anything out here that's bigger than a bat will eat a bat. Uh, you'll see lots of birds of prey, different types of like night hawks, um, different types of owls, uh, even like the brackles and pigeons will go for bats. Uh, so yeah, pretty much anything that's bigger than one uh, will eat one. Uh, it's kind of exciting when the hawks come. I know it's sad, but don't worry. There's like a million and a half bats, so if one gets picked <laughs> off, <laughs> they're gonna be, they're gonna do okay. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like a National Geographic <laughs> moment when one swoops <laughs> in and uh, grabs one, adds a little bit of drama to Have the story. Oh yeah, I've seen it a bunch of times. <laughs> Uh, the herons are kind of interesting too. The blue herons, uh, they're the biggest bird that we have out here on the lake. Uh, the male great blue herons can get a wingspan of up to six feet. And uh, they're the only ones that we've seen that's smart enough to just like perch up in the top of the tree and then just snatch them off. All the other ones, it'll be kind of like an air battle. Nope. Uh, so what we're seeing now, those ones that you see, those are birds. And I'll tell you an easy way to spot the difference between a bat and a bird. Actually, hmm. Nope, we do have a couple bats. Good job, guys. We had a grapple gun this way, but yeah, if you turn around, uh, Georgia, we've got the bats flying. She's uh, swooping us around to turn us around and get in position. These are the first bats of the night. Uh, the easiest way to again, tell the difference between the bats and the birds is that the bats never stop flapping their wings the entire time they're flying. Like sometimes, uh, several times a second, you'll be seeing them flap. Uh, again, that's because they are mammals, just like us, so they have solid bones. So they're only just barely able to fly. If they got wet, they would be too heavy and not able to fly. Uh, birds, on the other hand, they have hollow bones, so they can kind of flap their wings and they fly. Uh, bats are not able to do that. The entire time from when they leave the birds, all the way uh, until they come back in the morning. Oh, uh, check out the big guy. we got a uh, couple more picking up over there coming up. And yeah, this is just the beginning, guys, so it's going to pick up. We're going to start seeing lots more bats after this. we got a dragon boat coming through, too. They're pretty into it. Just like uh, Lady Bird Lake, they'll host a few dragon boat races throughout the year, so it's always fun to see them out here practicing. I can't even get them on my camera. Come on, they're rolling the yeah, again, they're all flying this way, away from the setting sun, up, up, and away uh, to go eat. Uh, a lot of people like to ask, well, where are the bats going? Uh, typically, they'll make about a 30 to 100 mile trip every night, uh, and it's just a feeding frenzy. This colony of bats alone can eat about 15 to 20,000 tons of insects every single night. Uh, so it does a lot, a lot of good for the farmers. Uh, it saves the U.S. about a billion dollars in pesticides every year, so it's fantastic to have bats in your community. The primary diet of these bats is going to be the corn earworm moth. Uh, they like to hang out on the corn ears. It's kind of a long name, kind of a uh, tongue twister, so a lot of the times we'll just call them corn moths for short. But yeah, their favorite snack is the corn moth. Uh, they like those the best because they're really juicy. They've got a lot of like uh, water value. Um, in them. Uh, the bats, like we were saying earlier, once they start flying, they never take a break. Uh, they're too heavy to land. Uh, so sometimes you might see them drop down to the water just to take a quick sip, uh, but most of the water that they drink, they just get through the bugs that they eat. Yeah, usually about 30 to 100 miles every night. Uh, we originally thought it was just about 30 to 50 miles, uh, but recently uh, they've been tracking them and finding out that sometimes they go as far as Houston. Uh, the Mexican free tails are one of the fastest species of bats on the planet. Uh, in flight, they can hit speeds of up to 70 miles an hour. And when the wind conditions are right, uh, they've even been clocked in at going about 100, 105 miles an hour. So uh, these bats are definitely fast ones. Uh, when they migrate from Monterey to Austin, uh, they're able to do it in a single night. Mm -hmm. One night. You can see uh, they just keep pouring out. Uh, the bats, sometimes people like to ask how long it takes them to come out. Uh, it's honestly like four or five hours. Don't worry, we're not going to be out here the whole time to see every last bat. Uh, but the most exciting part is usually the first 20, 30 minutes. Uh, sometimes they take little breaks. You'll see gaps, but then you'll see another, uh, another column start to come out too. Once they start piling out a little bit thicker too, uh, it almost makes what we like to call the bat snake uh, going down the sky. Um, you can see it just like swiveling all the way like miles into the distance. So if anyone needs a good band name, I don't think that snake is taken yet. Mm -hmm.
go like that or fake out. <laughs> <laughs> I might have said this already, but again, it's uh, kind of amazing that they don't uh, ever stop flapping their wings the entire time that they're out uh, this whole evening. From the time they leave to the time they come back, uh, they will never land, and that's because they're just too heavy uh, to take off from the ground. Uh, so if a bat ever falls, like sometimes when the baby bats are learning how to fly, uh, they'll fall into the water. Uh, bats are surprisingly good swimmers and really good climbers as well. Uh, so a, bat, a baby bat, if it doesn't make it quite, uh, quite flying the first time, it can usually land in the water, swim over to the columns or the shore, uh, climb back up, and try it again. Uh, they do have to, again, avoid some predators, though. Uh, like we were saying earlier, pretty much everything that's bigger than a bat will eat a bat. Uh, so the fish and turtles have been known to go after a bat every once in a while, too. Oh, yeah, here we go. Stuff we pick up. We've got some, some good uh, emergencies over here. Hey, Lori. Yes. Oh, I'm going to stay a little further out from the bridge for now because I think it looks cooler this way, but just if there's anyone in the audience that is like, why aren't we sitting right under the bridge? I will get there. I just think it looks prettier out here. Oh yeah, right this now. is the bat snake we were talking about, you guys. See it kind of just squirming across the sky. That ominous voice you just heard was our lovely Captain Georgia downstairs. <laughs> I like when they chime in. I think it, it adds to it. Yeah, just just I don't want anyone thinking that yeah. we're in a bad spot since all the other boats are up there. Oh no, we've got a better spot than all the other. I think boats. this is better. But we'll go over there eventually. Yeah, this we've got the skyline. We've got the bridge. We've got the bat. Great, Georgia. Keep up the good work. Does anybody have any questions so far? I've just been going on and on. If you've got questions, uh, feel free. Um, if you're not shy, just walk up here. You can ask me in the microphone. If you are shy, just raise your hand. I can come to you. No, right around uh, another fun fact, since I don't see any questions, um, these bats, because they come out in such dense clusters, um, uh, when they first started coming in the 80s, they were really throwing the weathermen for a loop. Uh, every night on the Doppler radar, they were seeing these big clouds, which looked like storm clouds coming out of the bridge, and they were trying to figure out what it was. Uh, it didn't take them very long to realize that those are, it's not rain, it's just clouds of bats. Uh, so they were able to use their findings and turn that over to BCI and some of the other uh, bat conservation organizations in order to help track the bats and let us know uh, where they're going. Yeah, as you can see, it's just thousands and thousands of them pouring out every single second. Uh, if you look way out into the sky, you can even see them in the distance. If you look far enough, you can just see them miles and miles away. It turned out to be a good day to see the view. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, a great day for did it. Did they ever come out any, like, any denser or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, so the peak... Uh, the question was, do they come out any denser? The peak season is going to be July, August, and September. Uh, in the hot, really dry months, that's the best time for them to go hunting. That's when they're the hungriest and the plants are perfect. That's also when, uh, when the babies are born and when the babies start flying. Uh, so that makes, uh, it kind of just doubles the number of bats in the bridge. And uh, yeah, it's always really exciting to see. Uh, so if you get the chance, come back and check it out in July, August, September. Uh, this is a great night to see them. Uh, we, we do have uh, some good bat snakes going on. But, uh, yeah, uh, in the summer, it'll be like three or four of these all going at once. So they're, yeah, three or four spread out. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll talk about the babies a little bit more, too. Again, this is a maternal colony, so about 95% of these bats are pregnant females. Uh, bats, again, are mammals, so they give live birth. They feed their babies milk, just like we do. Uh, bat, bat babies are called pups, uh, so that's kind of cute. And uh, each... Each mother is only able to have one pup per year, and that is just based on how much room there is. Uh, so no twins, no triplets, no litters, uh, only enough for one baby per year. And uh, again, that's just because they're so small. The adult bats are uh, 15 grams, uh, so not very, not very heavy, and again, about the size of your thumb. Uh, the babies, they come out at about 4 to 5 grams, so about a third of the mother's body weight. To put that into perspective, that would be like a 150-pound woman giving birth to a 50-pound baby. Uh, so that is quite a lot of work. So one baby per year is all that they can do. Uh, once the babies are born, it usually happens in late May, early June. Uh, they'll be weaned off uh, their mothers after about a month, and then they'll be able to start flying and hunting on their own. When the babies are born, it's kind of an exciting uh, thing, too. Um, I've never seen it, but I've heard it described a bunch of times. Uh, bats, you know, they like to hang upside down by their toes. Uh, again, that's just um, something that has to do with uh, how their um, hands work. They're kind of, bat hands are the opposite of ours. Like, 
when our hands are relaxed, they're open. And uh, if we make a fist, then that's when we're like tightening them. Bats are the opposite. Their, their hands are always in a fist. And uh, to relax or to kind of tighten them, they open them. Like, does that make sense? I feel like I'm kind of getting my words shuffled. But yeah, it's the opposite of how our hands are. So they're always in the closed position. Um, but yeah. So bats, they always like to be under bridges, in caves, upside down, because of how heavy they are. They need about 10 feet of uh, clearance to drop down and get their momentum going. Um, and yeah, bats, they're always upside down by their toes, except when they're giving birth. When they can't see them as well because of the light angle, or are they still coming out thick like they were? Um, it's kind of a pause right now, but we've got a couple more. Um, bats, they're just like humans. Uh, some people like to get up early, get the day started, and get out in a hurry. Other ones, they like to sleep late. Maybe they had, you know, a lot to eat last night, so they're not in that much of a hurry. Uh, so they're going to kind of hang out inside for a minute. Yeah, when the bats are born, uh, the mothers will actually turn right side up and hang on by their thumb so that gravity can help in that birthing process. Uh, the umbilical cord is actually kind of a safety net slash uh, bungee cord in this scenario too. So uh, if the baby gets away from the mother during the birthing process, that uh, umbilical cord will act like a bungee cord, keep it from falling into the water, and it can uh, climb back up to its mom. We'll start to pick up a little bit more too, but as we get closer, we can kind of look under and see. Um, again, you'll see some of them kind of going in the arches, that's the easiest spot. Once another, uh, one of those big clusters of bats starts to emerge, uh, then you'll see them uh, going under and then out and around each column. But we'll give it a second and see if we uh, see some more coming out. <laughs> Georgia, we've got some some compliments for you down here. We've got uh, some people saying you did good. Oh, if you look under that first column, we've still got a few going over there. Thank you. These ones that you see flying above us, again, they're not bats, those ones are birds, those are grapples. Uh, if you spend much time in Austin, you really can't avoid them. If you're leaving the H-E-B parking lot, it kind of looks like a scene from Alfred Hitchcock's birds, because there's just usually about 10,000 of them all hanging out on the power lines. Um, if you're in town for the first time and you're eating on a patio and you see some grapples around, hide your french fries, hide your tortilla chips, they are quick to swoop in and steal some for themselves. Well, the bats are kind of taking a pause right now. We'll keep an eye out to see if there's another emergence, but we can kind of look around at some other things too. See what kind of animals we have. If you look over here to you guys left, um, you'll see a bunch of black ducks swimming around over there. Uh, those are one of my favorite uh, birds that we have out here on the lake. Those are called the American Coots, spelled C-O-O-T-S. And uh, those birds are known for just not being able to fly very well. Uh, instead of uh, flying <laughs> um, really far, uh, they'll just kind of spread their wings and run across the surface of the water, kind of like a Jesus lizard. Uh, it's pretty cute uh, when that happens. If you look at any of the bird books of Texas, that's how it always shows them. It's almost like a Heisman pose, but with ducks. Uh, so those are the American coots, the ones with the black feathers. Uh, they've got a white bill. If you get close enough to them, they've got red eyeballs. They're only here for probably a couple more weeks. They're usually uh, migrational. They come down from the north uh, for the winters, and then usually by March or April, they'll start heading back north. The Solar Wind American Airlines bat. It's a UFO.
What is that? The black thing. Is it a bird? Well, when the bats first started coming to the bridge, uh, the huh? people of Austin were actually really freaked out back in the know. 1980s. Uh, there was about a million and a half bats in the bridge, and only uh, just under a million people here. So they were freaking out because there's more bats than people. Uh, so originally they wanted to exterminate them and have them removed. Uh, luckily, uh, before they did that, uh, the city council decided to do an environmental impact study, uh, which caught the attention. Um, uh, I don't know, I just call him like the bat god. He's, he's a guy by the name of Dr. Merlin Tuttle. He's written every book you can see, or just about every book about bats uh, that I've read. Um, he comes down here sometimes, you can see him on a little pedal boat taking pictures of the bats. Uh, but yeah, everyone made fun of him at first too, uh, for being like, no, oh, these bats are great. Uh, they just didn't understand. They thought that they were a pest, they thought everyone was going to get rabies, and that it was just going to be, you know, Halloween town. Uh, but Merlin Tuttle uh, convinced everyone, oh, I started to see a few more coming around. Uh, so, yeah, got a few more bats for you guys to look at right here. But yeah, uh, they were all making fun of Merlin Tuttle, saying like, who is this weird guy defending the bats? Like, we want them out of here. But he was able to found uh, Bat Conservation International. Um, which is a, a society that helps protect the bats and just um, educate people on how good they are. Uh, not only are they just a great natural pesticide, but they're beautiful to watch. They eat all the unwanted bugs. Uh, they bring us a lot of tourism. Uh, so he quickly went from being someone who they mocked in the newspapers to someone who is considered a hero around the lake. So we've got a, our bat snake going again, and then uh, those ones that you see flying by, those are actually some of this. Oh, great! So we've got lots of hungry bats now. This is always exciting when we have two of them merging together to form, form another one. I'm glad that we stuck around a little bit. Yeah, isn't it amazing just how many of them are stuck inside those cracks? We've got them going from the far north side of the bridge all the way to the end. Um, again, if you follow their pattern, you see them going under the bridge, out and around each little column, and then uh, repeating that all the way to the end and then coming out unless they decide to just go ahead and come out of the middle. Yeah, isn't this amazing? Y'all thought it was all, all the bats. They had already all come out, but that was just, <laughs> just the beginning. <laughs> How many pounds of bugs does each one eat a day? It can eat its entire body weight, so that's 15 grams. But yeah, when you've got, a, <laughs> when you've got the mini of them, they can definitely eat a lot. And again, they love the corn, earworm moths, uh, flying ants, and mosquitoes. Any juicy bug is going to be their favorite one to eat. <laughs> eat cockroaches? That is a good question. I hope they do. That would be great <laughs> if they did. <laughs> I'm sure they'll get an American Society for Cockroaches. I agree. Uh, my little friend up here, he said he doesn't like the bats, or he doesn't like the animals that bite humans. He just likes the ones that eat the mean bugs. So you can be a fan of these bats. You can see none of them are interested in us at all. Everyone, uh, a lot of times people will be scared to come onto the tour because they've got, you know, curly hair and they think the bats are going to get stuck in it. They're hungry. They're not even paying attention to us. They, they could see us, but they don't even really notice us down here. All right, shampoo. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah, as we go under them, you know, it is possible that you might feel a little bat sprinkle. If you do, don't freak out. It's your free sample. Again, they're tiny. It's like smaller than a raindrop. <laughs> but it does happen. <laughs> I don't know. I've, so I think I've only been peed on. I don't think I've gotten guano. <laughs> but it's like clear. It's just a raindrop. <laughs> one time we were going under the bridge and I looked up and one dropped into my eyeball. And I was really sad. <laughs> it was the worst. If any of y'all have seen 28 Days Later, which later, whichever one that happened to, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> But yeah, okay, so now, now if you look up this way, you can see just how that cluster of bats keeps going into the distance. It's a lot cooler when you've got uh, just a whole line of them. Um, that pattern, uh, my poetry teacher at, from college uh, actually commented on one of my pictures of the bats and told me a new word called murmuration. Uh, that's what happens when a bunch of birds or bats or whatever is all flying separately, but then they come together to kind of form shapes and shape ships. Murmuration. Can you say that one more time? I've never heard, you never told me that. I say that on my tour all the time, Georgia. You're just amazing. Yeah, I've been on it. 
murmuration. Murmuration. That's Word amazing. Of the day. <laughs> I'm going to get us the money skyline shot. The money skyline shot. All right, that sounds good. I can talk about some of the buildings over here, too. Don't get your money skyline shot on me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try that. We'll try that. No promise. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're, uh, we're about to get some good views of the skyline. You can still see the bats flying over the trees if you want to keep watching them, too. Uh, let's see, I can talk about a couple buildings. Uh, this one where you see some people gathered around right on the shore, that's the Waller Creek Boathouse. We've got a nice little coffee shop in there. Uh, right behind that, you'll see uh, that big glass tower with the white pole on top. That's the newest addition to the Austin skyline. That's the Fairmont Hotel. Um, it's a pretty cool building. I walked in there earlier last week. They just got it done. It had been delayed for like a year, I think. Uh, but they finally opened it. Uh, I don't know the cross streets. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was maybe just off Cesar Chavez, kind of close to Rainy Street. You'll find it. Just look up the Fairmont. Just follow the skyline. Follow your heart. You'll get there. Um, yeah, once we turn around a little bit more, I'll show you this really cool statue. We can't really see it from here because this uh, tree by the boathouse is blocking it all. You can kind of see the top of it, some of that silver, but we'll get back to that in a second. Oh, we got some more bats going overhead, so if you've got your hoodie, you're welcome to put it on, but, you know, it's whatever. There's some more of those American hoots. You can get a little bit closer look at them over there with their white bills. Uh, if you've got really good eyes, you can look into their red eyeballs, but not for too long. <laughs> uh, some of those big birds that you see flying that way, they're kind of right behind the tree line. Uh, we'll see if we see some more going by. Uh, they're cormorants. Let's see if I see any over there. It looks like we've got some turtles, too. Uh, if you look at the, kind of where that little dam is over there, um, uh, that little spillway, there's a lot of turtles hanging out on uh, the little lip right there. Usually there's a bunch of uh, birds called cormorants, but it's about their time to start migrating on. Uh, those white birds that you see right next to those two, those are the egrets that we were talking about earlier. Uh, the egrets are one of my favorite birds just because they're really pretty. Uh, but you can see them kind of roosting in the tree. Uh, usually they'd all be in that tree that we showed you earlier, but it's kind of funny. Uh, I asked last year, it's like, why did they move from this side of the lake to the other? Uh, so the egrets are always alone during the day. They kind of like to do their own thing and fish. But at night, just like the bats, they like to have safety in numbers. So they'll all come to the same tree to roost together. Uh, once they do that for, you know, a couple weeks or a couple months, though, uh, they start going to the bathroom on the tree. So that's why the tree starts turning white. And then they start breaking a bunch of the limbs, and the tree starts to look kind of shabby, like that one on that side did. So once that happens, they just switch, find a new tree on the other side of the lake, hang out there for six months, repeat the process, and then move back <laughs> to the other one. is doing some cool things to the clouds over here too. We have kind of a, a cool gradient. I was about to see, like, did I take my sunglasses off? The other day I was like, the sunset is so pretty, oh my god, these peaks. And then I was like, oh, these are just, that's just me, sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're starting to get to the position where you can see that cool statue I wanted to tell you guys about. So look back towards kind of the Fairmont and the Waller Creek Boathouse. If you look just to the right of the boathouse, you'll see a big oak tree. If you look just to the right of that tree, you'll see this big, crazy, silver-looking statue. You'll see that? That is a really cool piece. Uh, it's only here for a few more months, and uh, it's a uh, big sculpture called Bicycles Forever by Chinese artist and activist Ah Weiwei. Uh, it's made up of about uh, just over 12 hundred different bikes all like meticulously um, stacked together there. Uh, from here you can't really see it. It does look really cool, but when you're up close it actually creates a motion blur uh, to where it looks like all those bikes are moving uh, because of the way that they're stacked. So if you get the chance or if you're just trying to kill some time, uh, walk over there and take pictures with it, uh, read a book, spend some time looking at it. It's just a gorgeous piece of art that we've got in Austin for a few moments. I don't know where it's going afterwards, but on the side starts to go up over the river. Uh, this is a new, uh, the newest addition to our hike at the bike trail uh, on the Lakeshore Boardwalk. Uh, they just finished it maybe like three or four years ago and it's really nice because uh, if you're biking instead of being on the gravel you have kind of a paved road and it's nice because it's built out over the water so you can still get those gorgeous skyline views. Um, if you like to pay attention to the little details uh, like I do, uh, when you're walking down there you can pay close attention to the artwork too. Every maybe like 50 feet or so along the trail over there, they have little uh, statues that look like uh, leather belts that have been embroidered. And they're not embroidered, what's it called? Maybe it was leather. Embossed now? I think that's something else too. I don't know, but pretty much 
much when you like stamp leather to make like your names on your belts. It's a bunch of those, but they're made out of copper. Uh, they're placed all along the hike and bike trail over there, and they've got song lyrics uh, from different uh, Texas and Tejano artists. So uh, you can see lyrics from Willie Nelson, Dixie um, Chicks, a lot of different kinds of people. Yeah, I think that's the dragon boat coming back, you guys. They're making pretty good time. I think they might uh, might have the race in the bag this year. <laughs> Are we going to let the dragon boat pass us or are we going to cut them off? Because we're about to do a turn too. This will be interesting. They weren't expecting that. I want to give them a little tap. <laughs> <laughs> a little up tap. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to intimidate them to get them to go even faster. Oh, there we go. It's just tough love, you guys. We just want to be all right so for those of you who wanted to take a picture of the skyline this is definitely the best view you're gonna get uh, feel free to take your cameras out. You can move around if you need. Uh, if you need a group photo too, ask the people around you or me. Don't mind taking those photos for you. Uh, the tallest building you see in the skyline over there, the one that looks like a big flash drive in the sky, is the Austonian. Uh, it's currently the tallest building in Austin, uh, coming in at just under 600 feet, or maybe it's just under 700, 694. You know how many stories? Maybe Georgia does. Georgia, feel free to chime in. I don't. <laughs> Uh, it beat out the 360 tower, which is, if you look into the skyline, the one with the little needle points back there. Uh, that used to be the tallest building in Austin, uh, but it no longer is. The Austonian beat that one. Uh, but if you look where those cranes are, uh, the Austonian stays are number two as being the tallest one. Uh, the new tallest one is going to be the Independent. Uh, I think that's the one that kind of looks like a Jenga stack. It's kind of, kind of weird the way that it's built. <laughs> Y'all are looking good. Keep up the good work. We're so proud of you. Uh, there's another cool building in the skyline that I like to talk about too. Uh, can y'all see the one that kind of has the triangular, like spiky roof with those uh, white circles on it? That is the Frost Bank Tower. And uh, it's really interesting because it kind of looks like a big owl uh, from this April. That's got a fun story to go along with it. They say the designer of that building uh, tried to get into grad school at UT here in Austin where they're the Longhorns, but they weren't able to get in. Uh, instead, they chose Rice University, another great school just a few hours away in Houston. Uh, but years later in their career, when they were uh, uh, slated to design a building, in the middle of downtown Austin, uh, they couldn't help but give a nod to their alma mater. Uh, so they put in this design. Um, if we're looking at it flat on, you can't see the owl, but that's what makes it so fun. Um, those white eyeballs that you see, those circles, that's just the Frost Bank logo. So they designed it in a way to where you're looking at it straight on, it doesn't really look like anything. But if you hit it from a 45 degree angle where we are right here, those Frost logos start to form eyeballs, the corner of the building starts to form a beak, and before you know it, we've got a big owl looking down on the sky. Oh, I finally, I finally can see it. Mm -hmm. What did he do? 
Gas-powered engines allowed out here. It's only electric engines, um, and that's from the Town Lake Beautification Act of 1970. Um, so what that did was it banned swimming in the lake, it banned gas-powered engines, and uh, it just cleaned up the lake and established the hike and bike trail. Um, it made it really good though for people who like to kayak fish uh, because now they can uh, catch really big fish. Uh, some of the kinds of fish you'll see out here are largemouth bass, buffalo carp, um, catfish, sunfish perch, uh, alligator bars every once in a while. Uh, but yeah, those buffalo carp, um, I've seen people pull them out as large as like 30, 35 pounds around here. So great place to go fishing if that's what you're interested in. We've also got lots of species of turtles out here on Lady Bird Lake. Uh, most of them have probably gone in for the night. If you're out here during the day, you'll see a lot of the turtles out here sunbathing. Uh, but the most common type of turtle you'll see are the red-eared sliders. Uh, besides those, we've also got snapping turtle, soft shell turtles, and musk turtles as well. Uh, musk... You like the nice turtles? Me too. <laughs>